Is it finally time to buy Bitcoin or should you be selling? Well, a lot of people are trying to figure out, is it time to buy? But most people are still thinking, maybe I should sell whatever I have left. Well, there's certain ways that we can look into this without having to use a crystal ball. There's certain metrics, there's certain gauges that we can look at. So we're gonna go through that today. In this video, I'm gonna break down uh, a Wall Street cheat sheet. You might've seen it before. We're gonna break that down. Then we're gonna dig into the metrics, the on-chain data. We're gonna look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. We're gonna look at what the Fed's doing, inflation, Fed funds rate, and so much more to, to get a complete picture of the macroeconomic viewpoint and answer the question, should you finally be buying Bitcoin now or should you sell whatever you have left? So we got a lot to dig into today. Let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money because almost everything you've learned is wrong. Almost everything that they show you is wrong. And sometimes it's hard to see the nuance that's required to have that investing edge. Everything, it has, everything has nuance. And in that nuance is where we get our edge. Now, I just, I just wanna hold you back real quick because a lot of you have already kind of made up some, some uh, thoughts in your head. You've already made up your mind on this video, but I wanna just challenge you to have an open mind, first of all, and look at the data um, and then draw some conclusions. Now, um, nothing in life is certain, so there's no guarantee it goes to zero, nor is there a guarantee it goes to a billion or trillion or whatever it goes to, all right? But there are, a million possibilities. We don't want to think about all the possibilities. We want to think about the probabilities. What are the things most probable to happen? And that's exactly what we are going to be breaking into. Now, the first thing, uh, the price of Bitcoin is down. We're down 65, 70% off of its previous all-time high in November of 2021. That's how it's doing. It's also, you know, up 450% in the last 24 months. Uh, so what time frame do we want to look at? Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. When markets start, start going down, um, you know, we don't know how far they can go down, but we're looking for signs to typically find the bottom. Now, I typically, uh, I, I typically try to warn people, do not try to catch the falling knives as we go to, uh, as we say. If you try to catch a falling knife, you could cut your hand off, you don't wanna do that. So typically we're looking for signs to show us a problem, uh, show us when that potential problem uh, bottom would be, and then we use certain tools to help us get back in safely. So we're gonna cover all of that, but the first thing is we have to understand is typically we're looking for something called capitulation. Capitulation is typically when markets bottom. The reason why is because markets stop going down when there's no more sellers. Just like markets stop going up when there's no more, no more buyers. It makes sense, right? Very simple. So markets stop going down when there's no more sellers, and that's basically what capitulation is. Let's take a look at from Investopedia what the definition is here. What is capitulation? It describes the dramatic surge of selling pressure, a dramatic surge. So selling pressure, selling pressure, it's downward, downward, down. but then all of a sudden, boom, everybody's out. Just a dramatic surge. Um, in a declining market, so it's declining and it's dramatic, or security that marks a massive surrender by investors, a massive surrender. So people are holding on, they're holding on, holding, and finally those holding, people holding on, they give up. And psh, they surrender, they finally give up. And we can see that that typically marks the end of a decline. So when those last people holding out, when they finally capitulate, they give in, that typically marks the decline. Those who didn't sell, during a panic, panic are unlikely to do so soon after. So there's lots of people holding Bitcoin that have held all the way down to 3,3800 in 2020 and all the way back up. Those people, they're probably not gonna sell at 20,000. They held all the way down to 3,800. Why would they sell at 20,000? So some of those people aren't going to, but it's those last holdout of people that will, that's what we're looking for. Capitulation typically follows significant downturns in price. As the downturn accelerates, it reaches a point where the selling by the investors unwilling to suffer for further losses snowballs, leading to that what I was calling dramatic plunge in price. The heavy, so we're looking for this heavy trading volume accompanying the decline shakes out the weak hands. The people just bought because they heard they can make a bunch of money. The people that heard their friend told them that they could double or triple their money, those weak hands. We shake them out and it says the investors lacking conviction, those are the weak hands, and it replaces the ones with weak conviction, replaces them with more risk tolerant holders who may not have suffered prior losses and were willing to buy at the end of a protracted decline capped with a dramatic drop. So the Michael Saylor, Michael Saylor's not gonna sell. 
Uh, me, I held through 3,800 and back. I'm not gonna sell. There's a lot of people like that as well. So we'll, we'll transition from the weak hands into the strong hands. And so we're looking for those signs, all right? Now, um, I talked about this cheat sheet. You've probably seen this before, so I don't wanna spend a lot of time, but this helps you understand the psychological process that a trader or an investor would go through. And so there's disbelief. Oh, this thing's never gonna go anywhere. This is Bitcoin when it was 100 bucks or 300 bucks when I started buying. And then you get the hope. Uh, you know, hey, what's gonna come? Then optimism. Wow, like this, I, this is actually doing really good. Then there's belief. Wow, we should be putting more money in. This is the thrill. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how good this is going. Everybody should come in. You start sucking all these people in right here. Then there's euphoria. I can't believe it, I'm the smartest person ever. You've sucked in everybody, but guess what? Now you've sucked in all the people that were willing to come in. You've exhausted buyers. So then prices start going down, then there's complacency. Well, we just, we just need to cool off and then we'll get to the next rally. But then it keeps going down. Then there's anxiety. Uh, wait a minute, what's going on here? This is going further than I thought. Uh, I'm getting margin called, I have to come up with money, I don't like this. It keeps going down, denial. Uh, no, th this can't be true, right? My investments, th they're, they're great, they're really great, they're gonna come back, right? Then there's the panic, oh crap. Why is everyone selling? I, I better get out with whatever I can have left. And that's the point we're looking for, capitulation. I'm getting 100% out of the markets. I can't afford to lose more. That's the capitulation. So they hold, they hold, they hold, they hold, they hold. These people get out, these people get out, these people get out, these people get out. Finally, these people get out. Whoever stuck around after that rides the chop and then it starts the market all over. So that's what we're, that's where we're at, that's what we're looking for. Now I wanna show you this chart. Um, this is the Bitcoin chart. And what we can see here is down here, so we can see the, pr the price was like dropping, it came back up, that's the disbelief. And then it's coming down, no, okay, maybe not, okay, this time's different. Oh look, a little relief bounce, okay, no, it's gonna do good. And then it drops, oh, I think it's gonna do okay. It holds sideways, they hold here, and then right here. That's the capitulation. Look at these big volume arrows right here. That is massive amounts of selling, all right? Now, we know this to be true for a couple of things, let me show you. So we can see here, we had all these massive liquidations. It started with Terra Luna, you remember that. So um, Terra Luna had $60 billion of Terra Luna um, wrapped up, but it also had a bunch of Bitcoin that it was holding in reserve. And when Terra Luna went down and liquidated, it dumped 80,000, 80,000 Bitcoin onto the market to be liquidated. Now supply and demand. There was way more supply being dumped on the market than there were demand for it, than there were for buyers, which of course pushed the price down. You can see this in this chart right here. It's pretty incredible just to look at. And what we can see is this orange line right here is the is the Terra Luna Foundation's BTC balance, Bitcoin balance. So they bought Bitcoin here back in January. They bought more in March, uh, April, May, et cetera, right? And then all of a sudden in one day had to dump 80,000 Bitcoin, and you can see what it did to the price right here. See how it cratered this down, um, down to about $45,000 right here. And that's where it really started going sideways. When that started going down, then we had all the contagion. So then we had Celsius and we had Three Arrows Capital and we had all these other ones that caused it to even come down lower, which is where we're at today. The other thing you can see is that all these longs were being liquidated. Here's another way to see it. So this is volume that we have down here. These are liquidations. And so you can see as the price started coming down, stair stepping down, you can see these liquidations happening right here, which literally just plunged the price. So see this right here and this right here and this right here and this right here. So those are the big uh, momentum. Those are the big cells that we are looking for uh, for this capitulation. We saw there was 3.2 billion, with a B, 3.2 billion dollars worth of longs that were liquidated just since March as this market started moving down. All right, so um, we had all that happen. The Terra Luna went down, the Three Arrows Capital went down, the Celsius went down, then we had Voyager uh, file bankruptcy, BlockFi, you name it, right? Boom, 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 boom. But then the market stopped going down. But then we had another problem, and this is the miners the miners started to capitulate. So the miners, they process these transactions, they earn Bitcoin rewards, and most of them save a lot of the amount of Bitcoin that they had. The problem is, is that they started to capitulate and that was another big drop. We saw the market price plunge below the production cost of Bitcoin. So they hoped to make money on the Bitcoin they produced, but the market price dropped so low that they were actually losing money. We can see this in a chart right here. And what we have here is the, um, 
this orange line is the terahash per day. So this is the amount of Bitcoin processing power these computers plugged in. And what we can see is this is the amount of money they make for processing power. And you can see it's going up along with the Bitcoin price. So this gray line is the Bitcoin price. And so as long as this is moving along with the price, we look good. This comes up, it goes up with the price. The problem is right here, this divergence. And so the amount of money they're getting per terahash um, greatly diverged, diverted from the Bitcoin price. And so they started losing money. And when, that start, when they started losing money, they started to capitulate. We can see this is another chart. And what we have here is these, the blue line and the green line are the 30 day and the 60 day hash ribbons. So this again shows the amount of power of Bitcoin miners on the network. And it's important to understand this because as, the, as more people start to mine Bitcoin, it increases the power of the network, the hash power. And what it does is it's always gonna release the same amount of Bitcoin, but they divide it between more people on the network or less, depends on how many people there are. And so what we can see is that the people who are making less money start shutting their machines off. And then the existing supply that gets sent out to everybody gets uh, the, the existing people that are left get a bigger share of that. But what we can see here is that whenever these lines cross here, we get local bottoms in price. When it crosses here, we get a local bottom in price here, here, we get a line crosses here. And right here, we can see that it's happening again right here. And that's a capitulation. That's where miners start shutting their machines down and they say, forget it, we're done with this. Uh, we don't wanna mess with that anymore. Their revenue is in the toilet and these hash ribbons have been very reliable sources showing us of these, uh, that, that, that their capitulation. We've also seen that they've dumped the majority of the Bitcoin they've had, I believe uh, somewhere about 30,000 Bitcoin have been dumped onto the market by the miners themselves. And they have, I think about 70 or 80% of the Bitcoin they had on hand has now been dumped. So they don't have any big amounts of Bitcoin to dump into the markets. Remember, markets stop going down when there's no more sellers. So we had massive amounts of Bitcoin that got dumped onto the market by the Terra Luna and the FTX and you know, on those, we talked about all those, three years capital. We had massive amounts dumped there. Then we had another massive amount dumped because of the miners, but now there's no more big massive amounts to be dumping into the market, which could very well signal a capitulation. Like I said, we've seen all these insolvencies. So we see Celsius went insolvent. We have BlockFi, they basically went under, they had to get a loan, a bailout of $250 million to bail them out. Genesis, which is one of the biggest companies in the space. Everyone thought they were going to be okay. They, uh, they had exposure to the bankrupt of Three Arrows Capital. Uh, we had here Three Arrows Capital was one of the big ones that went down. Voyager had to file for bankruptcy. So all of those were going down. Capitulation, capitulation, capitulation. And we saw it. I showed you on the charts. The question is, have the markets exhausted all of the sellers? Now, there's always going to be someone that has a couple here or there they want to sell. But we're talking about the ones with 80,000 Bitcoin that they can dump into the market in any given time. Now, we don't know exactly when the bottom is. We won't ever know the bottom until we're looking backwards. We don't know the top until we're looking backwards. But we're looking at the data to try to see, and so far it looks pretty compelling. But let's look at it from a couple other angles. Now, first of all, let's look at it. Um, again, we don't know if it's the bottom or the top until we're looking backwards no serious investor really ever tries to predict the top or the bottom of a market. Nobody has a crystal ball. If anybody could get the tops and bottoms right, they'd be the richest guy in the world. Nobody can get it right. What investors try to do is they try to determine when things are cheap or when things are expensive. You know, investing is super simple, right? You know how to invest, right? You buy low and you sell high, right? Simple. Most people get it wrong though. They buy high and they sell low, but all you want to do is buy low and sell high. I didn't say buy at the bottom and sell at the top. We said buy low and sell high. So you're just trying to determine what the price levels are. Is it cheap or is it expensive? And what we can see when we look through data on Bitcoin, again, it's been declared dead over 450 times. But if we look at this chart back to 2011, all the way here till current, what we can see, these big red lines are drawdowns from their high. So here we had about a 95% drawdown, meaning it was went you know, down 95%. Here we had one that wicked down right here, about 85%. Here we had one about 80%. Right here we had one that was about, whatever, 75%. And you can see each drawdown gets less and less and less. This drawdown, obviously much higher, but here we are right here, so 
again, historically, we're very cheap. We're not at the lowest drawdown we've ever been, but we can see that each one has been getting a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. So we can see per the drawdowns, we're at about that level. Now we've already seen it on the volumes. We've already seen it on the capitulation from the CFI lenders. We've seen it on the volumes from the miners capitulating, the hashing ribbons, shutting off the miners. We've seen all that. But just on price level alone, you can see that we're at about historically very, very cheap levels. There's another one that I like to look at, a valuation floor. This is the realized price. So this looks at the um, Bitcoin when the last time it was moved on the network and what that price was. And we can see that whenever we get below these areas right here, it's been really, really good buying opportunities. And so we can see that here we are again, only a few times in history have we been below that realized price, which has historically been a really good buying opportunity. We can also see it on the 200 week moving average. I like this chart because Bitcoin has a four year halving cycle. That means every four years, the new amount of Bitcoin being released every day gets cut in half. And so a 200 week moving average is a four year chart, works pretty well. And we can see the same thing. Anytime we get to the 200 week moving average or even below it, these have been really good buying opportunities. As a matter of fact, I put some numbers on a chart here. So what we can see the fair valuation framework. This is from my friends over at the Bitcoin layer. Shout out to Joe and Nick. Um, what we can see is that whenever it's dropped down below here and here, in this time it returned 327%. When it got here, it returned 1,600%. I like 1,600%. I like 327%. So the last time it's got to there and there, those are the returns that it's done. Does that mean right now it's sitting below there? Does it mean it can return between 300 and 1,600 again? No, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that there's a very good chance that it will. There's a high probability. Does that mean you should put 100% of your money in it? Certainly not. Does it mean that you shouldn't try maybe 1% of your money? So you see what I'm saying? There's nuance to these things. Nothing is black and white. I'm not saying to sell everything you own and put 100% into Bitcoin, nor am I saying don't put zero. Maybe 1% is right for you, 2%. You can decide. But like I said, these have been historic buying opportunities whenever we've got to that level. Also, we can see the cost production. So um, as I always talk about, like with real estate, we've been talking about re recently, you can't sell a house for less than it costs to build one, and you can't sell a Bitcoin for less than the production cost of the Bitcoin either. And so what we can see here is that the Bitcoin production cost, meaning the cost of the electricity alone, is getting back down to, as I said, very, very cheap levels. So buy low, sell high. Does it mean it's the very bottom? We don't know. Does it mean it's very cheap? Yes, by almost all the metrics it is. All right, now um, beyond just Bitcoin, Bitcoin has been trading like a risk asset, right? So it's been trading like a tech stock. Now, it's not a tech stock, but it has been trading like a tech stock, like the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ trades different than the S&P 500. So we're gonna take a look at that. But it looks like risk could be bottoming soon. I'm not saying all the market's gonna bottom soon, but it looks like risk could bottom soon. So let me show you why. The first thing is that CPI, you know about that? Consumer price index? <laughs> It's super hot. As a matter of fact, it just came out with the latest numbers, which are 9.1%, breaking all the records we've had for four plus decades. And there's a bunch of reasons why that's not accurate and it's actually way higher. However, we can see that the Fed's doing everything they can to stop it, but they can't. It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, why is that important? It's important to understand because the Fed last November said that infl they finally admitted that inflation was out of control. They finally admitted they had to do something about inflation. And they said what they were going to do was raise rates and start quantitative tightening. Now they announced that in, this, uh, in November of last year. So what, is, what, what can we see from that? Uh, first thing we can see is here's a chart just showing the inflation levels right here. So we can see how high they are, 8.6, like I said, 9.1 is the latest number, CPI year over year, incredible. Now the Fed has already told us they vow and they're committed to getting back to 2%. Um, and so all eyes are on the Fed. Now a lot of people wanna know when will they pivot? And so this is an important thing to keep in mind. So this shows the, um, the implied Fed funds rate and the number of rate hikes that they have. Now what's important to understand about this is they tell us way in advance what they're gonna do because they don't want any surprises in the market. So they had said that they would raise rates through, uh, through um, 2023 for another year. 
All right? But the problem is, is that inflation is way, m way more stubborn than they had envisioned. And so now what they're doing is they're moving up and actually getting way more aggressive than they had originally planned to. So now they're forecasting that they may move an entire point, a single point, 100 basis points in the next meeting at the end of the month. So what does that mean? Well, it means that um, instead of dragging out all these raises for the next year, they could bring them forward. Why is that important? Well, it's important because that means that they could potentially be done raising rates before the end of the year. And when they're done raising rates, that means they're not raising rates anymore, which means they're pivoting, which is exactly what everybody's waiting for. All right, so we can see this uh, and we can see what these expectations are right here. So based off of this data, it looks like they could finish raising much earlier and pivot before the end of the year. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, what we can see, Actually, let me show you, let's look at this NASDAQ chart first. So what we can see is, remember, the Fed announced in November of 2021 that they were going to start raising rates this year in 2022. At the time they announced that, here it is November 8th, this is on a weekly chart, you can see that mark the exact top of the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ started selling off as soon as they announced that in November, all right? Now, remember, NASDAQ is the risk, right? This is the tech stocks, this is the growth. If we compare it to the S&P 500, look, at, here's the exact peak here, which as you can see is in January. So the, the S&P 500 peaked a few months later than the NASDAQ, than the risk assets. Why is that? Well, the risk assets are like the canary in the coal mine. They move in advance. Now, why am I showing you those two charts? Because let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin moved exactly like a tech stock, like the NASDAQ. You can see the exact top of Bitcoin was the exact same date um, as the NASDAQ. Not the same as the S&P 500. Bitcoin trades like the NASDAQ. And what does this mean? It means that it moves well in advance of the market. So as soon as they announced it, it already started rolling over, unlike the S&P 500 that waited. So why is this important? Well, if they finish sooner, then these will recover sooner, right? So we could potentially see these become the bottom or sooner. All right. Uh, now, the other one that we want to look at is the derivatives. This is the amount of people that are betting. These are the degenerate gamblers. These are the ones that are betting with leverage. They're betting for it to go long, betting for it to go short. And what we can see is that people short the heck out of the bottom. Whenever it gets there, they're trying to guess the next move. But the problem is, is that the funding rate flips heavy negative as shorts pay longs more and more to enter a position. So we can look at this derivatives, we can see the amount of bets that are long and the amount of bets that are short to get a gauge for where they uh, think the bottom will be. And what we can see is that this really did a good job calling the bottoms in 2020 and 2021. We can see it right here, look at that. We can see it right here, which did a good job calling it here, which did a good job calling it there as well. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We looked at the S&P, we looked at the NASDAQ, we looked at the minor capitulation, we looked at the CFI, the DeFi capitulation. We've looked, at, uh, we've looked at the derivative traders, the degen gamblers, we call them. Now, is it the absolute bottom? As again, look, we don't know. We don't know the bottom until we're looking backwards on it, all right? But what we do know is we know what the signs of a bottom look like. We can see the volumes and we know that when we finally get rid of the last sellers, that's the bottom. Markets stop going down when there's no more sellers. What we can see is that we've flushed all the weekends out. What we've seen is that even when the miners dumped the rest of their Bitcoin they had on the market, it didn't go down anymore. As a matter of fact, it all got bought up. So it looks like we potentially have reached the bottom. On top of that, all the metrics look like we found the bottom as well. On top of that, it looks like the Fed's timetable of raising rates has moved forward. And as we showed you, the NASDAQ and Bitcoin or risk assets could start moving earlier. Is the absolute bottom? We don't know. But we do know is that the liquidations and the bad news that are happening now aren't really pushing the markets down anymore. No more sellers. We also know that it's at all types of key support levels. And we think that risk assets are bottoming anytime soon. They could be anytime soon. Now, how do you handle this? Do you, do you try to catch that falling knife and buy? Well, again, we don't know the bottom, but we do know is it cheap or expensive? And it shows us that now it is cheap. So we buy low. We sell high, or in my case, we don't ever sell, we just buy low. Now, if you're unsure of what to do, let me, let me give you a couple scenarios. So one of the best things to do if you're unsure is do something called dollar cost averaging DCA. That means if you had 
$10,000 or $1,000 or whatever, $1,000 to put into Bitcoin, maybe don't put all of it into Bitcoin, maybe divide it up and put some in every week or every two weeks. That way, as the price is moving, you're averaging your price in. All right, that's one way to do it. The other way is not to try to catch that falling knife and just buy when it's cheap and buy consistently. All right, we don't know, we don't have a crystal ball, but we use metrics to give us the probabilities. And again, I'm not saying to put 100% of your money and sell everything, but it might be worth one or 2%. But I don't know, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments down below on this video. I can't wait to see them actually. As always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. And if you don't, you can give me a thumbs down. I know a lot of you hate Bitcoin right now because it's dead for the 458th time, but that's okay. Give me a thumbs down and leave me a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And that's what I got for today, right? To your success, I'm out. Since you've stayed to the end, I know you like this video, which means you're probably gonna really like this video right here and this video right here.